So I just got back from Lake Norman. Uh, this was the what is the second stop of the 2010 FLW Tour, uh, and I ended up having a uh, having a really good tournament. Uh, although it didn't start off that way, kind of like Table Rock, it's the same deal. I'm I'm really making it hard on myself, I guess, uh, and I'm having to play catch up in these events, but. You know, for me, when I got there and I practiced, I hadn't seen the, the south part of the lake. The only part of the lake that I'd ever seen before was the river, and it's, it's real narrow up there, and the fish is just like a river. However, I, I looked at my practice and I said, you know, I'm not gonna go up there until the last day. I wanna learn more about the south end of the lake and, and see what it has to offer. I spent my first day fishing down south and basically skipping boat docks and I was fishing a jackal flick shake again, the same bait that, that really did well for me uh, out at Table Rock. I fished both a 4.8 and a 5.8. Um, this is the 4.8 in watermelon color. And I'd rig it wacky style uh, to skip it up underneath the boat docks, and then I'd rig it on the, on the shaky head to fish out a little bit deeper. But I ended up spending my second day up in uh, an area called Reed Creek. And it's, it's really the biggest creek on the lake. It's actually almost like a lake in and of itself. When I went in that creek, I, I started out throwing the shaky head around again. And I figured the fish would probably be on points um, leading up into pockets where, where they might want to spawn. And, and so I, and I primarily was, was looking for largemouth. And if I'd caught some spots, great. But when I, when I got there, I ended up catching some, some fairly decent spots. I was catching some two pound spots. I even caught a three pounder. And it kind of got me started thinking that, well, maybe, maybe you, know, you can pattern these spotted bass. And uh, so that was, that was kind of encouraging. The last day of practice, I spent half of the tournament or half of that day in a place called Mountain Creek. And it was a dirty water creek uh, down on, again, on the south side, south of the 150 bridge. And it really looked like good largemouth water. It had really good color to it. Um, there were a lot of docks, a lot of rocks. There was a lot of riprap. And uh, the day that I went in there, it was cloudy and it was also windy. So I ended up uh, throwing a moving bait. And in those conditions, I like to throw a crankbait. And you know, really my go-to bait in, in practice, and, and, and I've caught a lot of fish on this deal, is, is the, uh, the Jackal Aragon, the medium runner. Um, and this, this bait will go down about five to, to seven feet. And I was fishing it on like 10 pound line, and I'd fish it around rock. Anywhere I had wind blowing up on a rocky point, um, or you know a seawall that had rock around it, or any kind of lay down or wood. I mean, you can run this this bait right into the wood, bang it off the wood, and usually you'll get a strike, a reaction strike from these fish, either coming off the rock or the wood. This thing is really noisy. It makes like a clacking sound uh, because of its jointed body. And uh, and I was using a, a red color and then the chartreuse shad. If the water was a little bit cleaner, I'd go to this. But if it was dirtier, then I'd use red. And, and, and I ended up really getting some decent bites. I, I, you know, I had a couple that were like two and three quarter pounds, two and a half pounds, good largemouth that I was really happy about. Um, but it was a conditional deal, you know, and, and if the wind wasn't blowing, you had to catch them like on a shaky head in those same areas. So. Going into the tournament on the first day, I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go for largemouth. I, the spots, I felt like I could catch a limit of those. I just didn't know how big they were going to be. I thought maybe it's a way to catch eight pounds, nine pounds. And you know, if you get lucky, you get over 10 pounds if you get a good one. I decided to, uh, to start my day uh, in Mountain Creek. And that was, was a bad decision for me. Um, that was my first bad decision and it got me, it got me started off in kind of a bad direction. I, I really didn't fish well the first day. I was real antsy, I was real nervous. Well, I get in there, it's flat calm, and I throw that crankbait around for an hour in some really good looking water, and, and I, I don't get a bite on it. And then I pick the shaky head up and I start catching some small fish, that, and they had to be 14 there, and I'm catching like 12 and 13 inches. At 10.30, I've got a bail on Mountain Creek, and, and, and I, so I just said, I'm just gonna go back in, I'm gonna go to Reed, and I'm gonna try to catch some of those spotted bass that were in there, and, and catch seven, eight, nine pounds, and, and salvage the day. Well, I get in there, and in my main little area that I wanted to start, and I was fishing these these points, you know, that were leading me in these pockets. I get in there, and there's already like three or four boats in there. Scott Suggs is in there, um, David Dudley's in there, uh, Glenn Brown was in there, and these guys. Uh, uh, Glenn was fishing docks, but Scott was fishing the points, and he was fishing offshore. And he's in there calling. I'm seeing him. And as soon as I get there, he's throwing fish out and calling. So I didn't know what he had. Turned out at the end of the day, I think he weighed like nine pounds or something, maybe ten pounds. So I get in there, and, and then I start fishing fast. I get on a point where I'd caught some in practice, and 
Um, and, and I get a couple bites, and I, you know, I might have caught one keeper, but it just wasn't like the day in practice. In practice, I could get three or four bites right off the bat on these things, and, and they were up a lot shallower. And I kept trying to force that shallow deal, like in less than five feet on the point, when most of those fish had moved off. They, it got sunny um, in the afternoon, and a lot of those fish that, that were up when I was catching them in practice moved out onto the break, and they were sitting anywhere from like 10 to 15 foot. And that's what happens in these deals. I mean, you make some bad decisions and all of a sudden you're making more bad decisions. And, you know, th this game is so much about decision making and I've learned that over the years. And so anyway, I ended up catching four keepers that day, fishing way too fast. And, um, and I can't get my last keeper. I, and I had like an hour and a half to do that and I still couldn't catch the last one. I did lose one. I don't know if it was a keeper or not, it might've been. But regardless, it was just a bad day. So I, I get back and I weigh in seven pounds and they caught the crap out of them. Everybody there, they, it, I think 10 something was 50th place. So I'm like three pounds out right off the bat on the first day and I'm sitting in 110th place and I'm aggravated. I mean, I'm like, you know, I, I knew going into the tournament that I could, I, could, I could catch 10 pounds a day. I felt like nine to 11 pounds was doable. Um, but I just didn't execute and I made really bad decisions on the first day. So the next day, I didn't let it bother me. I, I, I knew I came back at Table Rock and I've had other events in the past that, that when fishing the FLW series that I've been able to come back. So I, I kept a positive mind. Well, I get in uh, to the creek first thing in the morning and I go all the way to back, back of the creek where I had a little point that was kind of the last point before the creek turned into a flat and it was a little staging area. And I and I'd got some bites on there uh, in practice and I didn't know how good that little place was, but uh, I figured it was a good place to start. So I get in there and I make my first cast and I catch a keeper. And I make another cast and I catch another keeper. And within an hour or within maybe 45 minutes, I had a limit. It probably weighed about eight pounds. And then my co-angler ended up catching three or four keepers off that spot too. Spot kind of died off a little bit around nine, 10 o'clock. And then I kind of worked my way out into the deeper points in the creek. And I started catching more fish. Um, by the end of the day, I had I think I weighed in 10 pounds, nine ounces. So I, I made a big move from, from the first day and I moved up from 110th place to 75th place. And I was feeling good about fishing that last day. I was really like, you know what, I'm gonna go out and catch them. And, but I ended up starting back on that same point again in the morning and my first two casts, I catch two three pounders and they were three pound spots. And I was like, wow, I'm pleasantly surprised. These are some nice fish. So, and then I catch another one about 14 inches. So I've got three in the well. I got about seven pounds in the first, say, you know, 40 minutes of the tournament. Um, and then that point just kind of died out and I couldn't get any other, I caught some small fish off of it, but I wouldn't catch any keepers. So I started to back out a little bit and work my way out the creek. Again, fishing those points and those, those channel points, I ended up uh, catching another three pounder and then another one about three and a quarter. So I, I had four really, really good ones. And then I had you know, a small one that I had to call out. My decision was just to keep fishing for spotted bass and wherever the day ended out, it ended out. So I ended up with 1310, which turned out to be the, the tied for the second heaviest bag of the, of the final day of the event. And that made me feel good. I'd made some uh, good adjustments. I went from a bad first day and I turned, you know, I, I turned the tournament into a really good tournament. So I've got three more events to go and I've got to get focused and I just got to avoid the bombs and try to catch fish at every tournament. And hopefully when this is all said and done, I'll make it to the championship. Uh, hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into my experiences on the water. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool, there's a lot of camaraderie and it's fun hanging out with all the pros and your heroes and, and it's really neat and it's been a great experience so far uh, with my rookie season and I look forward to, to getting back on the water and, and competing. Sorry, you know